Welcome back to GLB Productions. Bruno Luce here. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'd like to talk about a really, really important topic, and that is the health of your ears. Now, we all know about looking after our ears when it comes to avoiding high sound pressure levels, wearing appropriate hearing protection. But what about looking after your ears from the inside? Let me explain what I'm talking about. At the beginning of this year, I developed quite an interesting blocked ear condition. This ear had been prone to getting a wax blockage for a couple of years. Then at the end of January this year, 2019, this ear became completely blocked and I couldn't hear any high frequencies. So in order to understand what I'm going to tell you next, we have to know about the structure of our ear. So let's take a look at this picture, uh, anatomy of the ear, so that we can understand the different sections. So as you can see on the picture, your ear is divided into the outer ear, which is the section up to the eardrum or the tympanic membrane. So you've got the ear canal, as well as the outer ear, the bit that we can see on the outside. Then you have the middle ear, which consists of the three smallest bones in the human body, the malleus, incus, and stapes, also known as the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. And then you have the inner ear, which consists of the cochlea, the eustachian tube, and the nerve that goes to the brain. Okay, so when your doctor looks in from the outside, all they can see is the ear canal, right? They can't see past the eardrum. The eardrum, of course, is the thing that the sound waves hit and it vibrates sympathetically and then that vibration is transferred to the small bones on the inside, which then transmit the vibrations through to the cochlea. The cochlea converts the vibrations into electrical impulses, which are then interpreted by your brain to uh, result in what we hear. Now, this whole thing is very, very tiny and very, very delicate, all right? Those three bones in the middle ear can fit onto a coin, no problem at all. All right, so the other part of the equation which is not shown on this diagram is that your ear produces earwax, also known as sebum, right? Now, sebum is very important because it acts as an antiseptic. It also helps to keep the ear canal um, clear of debris. And this earwax is periodically shed out through the ear, right? We all know what it looks like. It's kind of yellowish and sometimes it's soft, sometimes it's hard, and sometimes it gives us trouble because it results in blockage. Now, for me, I know that my ears have a tendency to accumulate earwax, especially the left side. I've had it syringed out before and everything was fine. But this time, my doctor looked in and he couldn't see any wax. So he said, you know, maybe you have an ear infection. So he prescribed me some antibiotics and, uh, you know, I took those for a week. Mm, slight improvement, but I came back to him after that and I said, look, uh, I really think that you should send me to see a specialist. All right, so he sends me off to see a uh, ENT, ear, nose, and throat specialist. And the ENT has a camera on the end of a long probe. And with that, he is able to look into my ear and make a definitive diagnosis as to what is going on. I have the pictures from that session and I'm going to share them with you. Now let's begin by taking a look at this picture. Now this picture shows a view of my left ear. The camera is inside the ear canal and you're seeing a view of the eardrum. That little bony protrusion that you can see coming sort of pressing into the eardrum is actually the end of the malleus, right, which sits against the tympanic membrane and translates the vibrations into the rest of the ear. Now, this is after he had cleaned it, all right? Before he had cleaned it, my left ear looked like this. 
Now, isn't that something? Now, all of that yellow stuff is basically earwax. And as you can see, it is not completely blocked. It's probably about 80% blocked. But my left ear still worked fine, right? I thought I could hear normally. So when he stuck the probe into my right ear, this is what he saw, completely blocked, right? So as soon as he saw that, he said to me, all right, look, you've got a good problem. This is very straightforward to solve. Let's go and deal with it. So the way that they deal with this is he has a sort of set of cleaning tools, right? The principal thing that he uses is essentially a really, really small vacuum cleaner. And it's on the end of a long probe, or rather it, it is attached to a long probe. And it allows them to essentially vacuum out all of the wax. And this process, it took quite a while. I asked him, how long do you think that wax has been accumulating in there? And he said, probably years. So, you know, he had to add, they use a special kind of olive oil, not the sort that they use for cooking, all right? They use a special kind of olive oil to soften the wax, and then, you know, they, they go at it with the vacuum. They also have different types of probes that they use to break up the wax and, you know, just make it, um, make it a bit um, easier to, to get out through the vacuum cleaner, all right? Um, the challenging thing with my ear is that because my ear canals are somewhat restrictive and also if you look on this diagram you can see that there is this shelf where the arrow is pointing. The area behind that in my case was there was some wax that was trapped there and it was very difficult for him to get it out because obviously they're working in a very confined space and if they make any mistakes with their tools, they could potentially damage the eardrum, which, you know, <laughs> being a sound engineer, obviously, I didn't want him going anywhere near there. So it took him about 25 minutes. And when he'd cleared everything out, the clarity that I could hear was just amazing, right? Even things like the HF from rubbing my hands together, it just seemed like everything was in high definition. And the reason for this is that your brain has the ability to compensate for changes in your physical hearing. So if you lose some high frequency, your brain can actually turn up that part of the audio spectrum to compensate. So what my brain had done in the case of my right ear was that it had effectively cranked the treble up to the point where, you know, it was trying to compensate for the wax blockage. All right. So once he had cleaned all of this out, you can see in this picture, this is what my right ear looked like, right? So quite a difference from the block state to this. So you'll notice that it does not look exactly like the left ear. And the reason for this is that some of the wax had actually been in contact with the eardrum, which is why you can see that redness and swelling. He tells me it'll go back to normal in about a you know, couple of months. The other thing that I'd really like you to see is this picture here. Now this picture, the camera is pulled back a little bit from the other pictures so that you can see not only the tympanic membrane, but you can also see the area immediately around it. Now, if you look at the bottom of the picture, you can see that shelf that I was referring to earlier. And if you look, you can see quite a bit of redness on the right side. And also on the left side, you can see there's some what looks like pitting. Now, the redness on the right side was caused um, just, it's just a uh, redness due to the cleaning process, right? Because he had to get the tools in there in order to break up the wax that you saw in the earlier picture when it was completely blocked. The pitting that you can see, that is what is called bone erosion. Uh, he explained to me that due to the pressure of the wax on the soft tissue, um, it actually begins to eat away uh, literally into the bone, right? Because the ear canal is actually an opening 
uh, into the side of your head. There's some cartilage at the opening, but there's bone in the rest of the section. And what had happened was that due to the pressure of the wax, the bone had actually begun to retreat. And he explained to me that in very severe conditions, you can actually erode completely through the bone into the brain cavity. <laughs> and he's had um, uh, patients where this was so severe that there was actually a passage from the outer ear. He could literally look through and see the bottom of the brain, which is really, really scary, right? So anyway, um, now my ear is nice and clean and you know, I count myself very fortunate that I was able to have such a wonderful ENT and I was able to catch it within you know, a couple of weeks of the condition developing. So there are some lessons that I've learned from this um, that I'd like to share with you as my viewers and also as my fellow sound engineers. So the first lesson is don't stick anything in your ears. A lot of people will attempt to clean their ears using those commercially available cotton buds. Here, I'll show you some. So a lot of people will use these things to clean out their ears. The problem with that is that these commercially available cotton buds are specifically designed not to be able to pass through the restriction in your ear canal, right? So where the ear canal narrows, they're designed to be slightly larger than that. So that gives you an idea of just how small your ear canal is. The reason that they do this is they don't want you pushing it all the way in and puncturing your own eardrum. Now, when my ENT specialist cleaned out my ear, he used a special surgical cotton bud that was about one third the size of the one that I've just shown you, all right? And that allowed him to access right up to the point of the tympanic membrane. Now, of course, the problem, you know, with those is that, yeah, you can go and get some, but, you know, you're on your own as far as the damage that you might do is concerned. So, you know, he explained to me that unless you are willing to take responsibility, don't stick anything in your ears, because what, will, what, what it will do is it will push the earwax further in and it will compact the earwax to the point where your ears can no longer self-clean. And that is where you have the condition that I had, right? I, of course, silly me, had been trying to stick cotton buds in of the type that I shown you and that had resulted in the mess that you saw. So your ears are self-cleaning. Don't stick anything inside them, right? Leave it to the professionals. It's interesting that this differs remarkably um, from your mouth, right? With your mouth, you got to do the cleaning, right? You got to brush, you got to floss, you got to, you know, mouthwash, whatever. With your ears, they do it themselves, leave them alone, they'll be happy. Okay, now the next thing is any sort of pain in your ear and any kind of blockage is a big flashing warning sign, all right? I was having pain in my ear. I thought, and my GP thought that it was an ear infection, but actually the pain was caused by the complete occlusion of the ear canal, which meant that pressure was building up against the eardrum. I, I hope you understand that the eardrum is sort of suspended um, and the pressure on both sides has to be the same, right? The, it's open to atmosphere on one side and on the other side, it is also open to atmosphere through the eustachian tube, right? Which uh, leads to sort of the back of your throat. So if there is a blockage on either side, the pressure is then unequal and as a result, you get pain because of that, right? So pain in your ears does not necessarily mean you have an ear infection. It may be that you have a blockage so any pain, go and see a GP, go and see a specialist, especially as a sound engineer. Because as sound engineers, our ears, they are our professional tools 
and we absolutely must look after them in the same way as you know um, an athlete would look after their body as um, you know a musician would look after their hands that sort of thing now the third thing that is quite interesting is that my GP could not see this blockage right now he had uh, one of those handheld I don't know what they're called, but they are the things that um, doctors use to look in your ears. No, he, he could not see this blockage. As you can see from the pictures, it was completely blocked, but he couldn't see this. And um, as a result, he thought that, you know, it was an infection in the middle ear. So the result, that, you know, what I learned from that is that if in doubt, seek a second opinion, right? And my GP was very good in, in, in that after a week, condition did not clear up. He immediately sent me to a specialist because he recognized that there were things going on that he was not aware of with his own experience and his equipment. So that was really, really good. Anyway, this has been a uh, quite an eye-opener for me because I've never had a blockage this bad and I've never had to have my ear vacuumed out, literally. I'm glad to report that, you know, now about a month after this has taken place, my hearing is fantastic, you know, I can mix, uh, I can do all my professional responsibilities and, you know, uh, I'm very, very grateful that this has been sorted out. Um, my ENT told me go back and see him in six months so that he can uh, verify that things are as they should be and that's where we stand at this time. So if you have any questions about this, do please uh, leave them in the comments below. Um, if you are in Singapore and you need a really good ear, nose and throat specialist, please contact me privately and I would be more than happy to pass along the contact details of the ENT that I saw. He's a wonderful man. He's very, very experienced. As soon as he found out I was a sound engineer, he said, all right, you know, this is something that we must make sure that we clear up. Um, and he made sure that he did good follow-up immediately after the cleaning. He has an in-house audiologist who I saw to get a hearing test and um, to verify that my hearing was normal and that no permanent damage had been caused by that condition. All right. So, thanks very much for watching. This is Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.